Good afternoon, good morning and good evening from wherever you are watching or listening from. Welcome to episode 15 of Three Blokes and a Rugby League podcast. On today's episode, we will have a preliminary final chat from the Melbourne Storm and Canberra Raiders and Penrith Panthers and South Sydney Bunnies. We'll have a grand final preview of next week's game. We'll be talking about the Dally M results, which have come up today. We'll be talking about the Challenge Cup final, the Super League games, and we'll be doing that with myself, Jamie Robinson, Josh McVitie, and Super Sub is back, Mr. Eden Harris. Five stone down, wet, <laughs> got his teeth done. <laughs> He's not had his teeth done. I'm not having that. I just brush him. That is, he brushed his teeth for the first time in four years. Um, <laughs> welcome back, lads. It was good. It was a bit of a mix and match. We had Jed and Jay on last week. We've got you two boys on this week. Um, I mean, both your teams, obviously, in the, the prelim finals this week on, on separate sides of the draw. Um, good good result for one year, bad result for the other. Joss, coming to you for it was the uh, it was your player of the weekend. Yeah, my player that week was uh, the bloke who pretty much won the game for me, and it's uh, Jerome Hughes, two try assists, two line breaks. I thought his kicking game was really impressive, and I thought he took it to the uh, to Raiders, obviously put us to the sword. So I think it was uh, a real good, strong performance for him, what we're coming to expect now. Yeah, mate, we'll get into that a bit later on as well. But yeah, he, he, you know, he pretty much put new boys down. What about you, Eden? Uh, I've gone for I say you know, you know I've gone for one of the Panthers obviously but two line breaks 145 run meters 41 tackles three tackle breaks and a try assist. I was looking at the lineup before and, and the only thing that was making me shaky was the absence of of kick out but I say you just came in absolutely filled that void and just another one of the pack that just keeps churning out that those kind of numbers and another tip of the hat to the Panthers academy really fantastic performance. Absolute monster, wasn't he, in that game? So obviously, Freddie Fittler's going to make his announcements post the grand final for the extra lot of uh, inclusions in the squads. But, I mean, not only would he be in my squad, he'd probably be starting now. He's been that good this year. And, and obviously, he's won, a, he's won an individual award that we'll get to later on. And fair play to him. He's been unbelievable. But, Joss, coming to you first, mm. mate. Melbourne Storm, 30. Canberra Raiders, 10. Knockout football, semi-finals. When it gets into the grand final, and you boys just weren't good enough, were you? No, it just looked a real tired performance, to just, especially for the first 25 minutes or so. Boys just look absolutely on their feet. But then again, it's just a typical Melbourne performance, isn't it? You know, they've, it's come to the finals and they've just blown a, a, pack, a team off park who've gone well all season. So it just shows you how well they're going. The result probably warranted it, given the, the performance of both teams, mate. Quite poor and, like you say, exhausted almost from, from you boys. And we've said it time and time and time again. It's just so professional from the storm. You know, Craig Bellamy kicking in, Cameron Smith kicking in at this time of the season. But, you know, the start of the game, we've mentioned it all season, but um, uh, Canberra Raiders' first 20 minutes, it was just lacklustre, really poor, and especially your three-quarter line. Yeah, it was, it was really hard to watch, to be fair, at first 20 minutes. Obviously, it's, it's do or die. I know they had to, they got messed about with travel arrangements and stuff, but it's... You don't want to be doing this in in a, in a prelim final, pretty much. Obviously, that's self-explanatory, but concentration level just wasn't there, and it was silly, simple errors. And we've talked about it time and time again. If you give a good side a start, you don't want to catch them. And Melbourne put this to test, and you know they've come away winners. And for me, they deserve the win. I see a lot of media outlets and a lot of people on social media in general saying that Melbourne might have been lucky with the bounce of the ball, especially for that Justin Olam try. But, I mean, you've got to be in them positions and you've got to force these errors from the Canberra Raiders. And, and if, if you're going to be lucky in that sense by working hard, then, then you know, they, they do it for a reason, mate. I mean, you've mentioned him already, but Jerome Hughes, arguably the best performance he's had at first grade. Two try assists, two tackle breaks and two line breaks and putting everything else into that performance. But your pack, I just, I just felt as though they didn't have much chance to get on the front foot, mate. No, and I think the line speed of the uh, Melbourne just just put that to the test. You know, this, this ability to make gain yards and they just couldn't get anywhere. You know, there was only one or two of them who scraped above 100 metres. And when I say scraped, they were literally just over 100 metres. And the, just the physicality. And it's like you said earlier on, Jimmy, that the professionalism of the side, the Melbourne side, just blew them off park and just took it to the, the forwards and then didn't get anywhere from there. 
players like Sia Solioli, Elliot White, Ed Dynamis, Louis or less than 100, Josh Papali and Corey Harrower and Ira obviously had their own reasons as why they didn't come get over 100. But like you mentioned, mate, Joe, Joe Tarpany and Hudson Young just 100 and 106 respectively and only Johnny Bateman getting 128. Do you reckon this was just most likely because they, they got absolutely dominated in the first 20 minutes and they were just knackered or, you know, was there other reasons? Yeah, I think the travel would have helped. You know, they were straight off playing straight to Suncorp and straight into it. But I just think, you know, it's been a long year. A lot of blokes have had to play big minutes this year. Obviously, we've talked about them having basically nine first teamers out at one point. And I think it just it would just won too far for them, especially against a big physical uh, Melbourne side. And you're not just playing against starting for the team and getting a breather. Right? You know, you look at the bench who's coming off and they've just got quality coming at you at all points throughout the game. So I just think that Melbourne hit them hard and took it out of them and then you don't have a platform to go from there. We talked about how key it is, mate, the past couple of weeks of the rotation off the bench, not just for Melbourne, but in other teams in general. But you look at their bench, like, you know, Brandon Smith, Tino Farsa, Malawi, Dale Finucane, their starters in like 90% of the other teams in the NRL. Yeah. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, massively. Like you, like you said, you know, Brandon Smith starting nine for Kiwis. If you start Dale for Newcomb, then Nash drops the bench for you. And I mean, you don't want him coming off, coming at you when you're tired after 20 minutes, do you? And Tino Fasamalawi, like you said, he's, he's been unreal this year, especially off bench. And, you know, just it must be a, a real good luxury to have to have them boys coming off bench to come on and carry on doing a job. And I think, I think Jesse Bromwich really stood up in this game. He, he, obviously, he's a world class forward, as we know. But he, he He's starting to look like him all his old self, and he's he's getting through a lot of grunt work, which goes unnoticed. Obviously, he's in engine room where he needs to be doing work, but they just it's just a great luxury to have in it. They just seem to have world class players that all parts are called. What's happening with you boys, mate? Obviously, you watch Canberra with a keen eye every single week. Why is it that you start so slow in that first twenty minutes? I, I honestly don't know. I really, really don't know. It used to be opposite way around where. We die off in the second half of games, and I don't know if it's because the concentration's gone to seeing a game out or what. But you know, like I said, not making up excuses, but there's travel issues, and then there's there's blokes missing. That if Hodgson played, would would decisions be made differently? You know, it's it's just one of them, and I just think we uh, just want to race at the weekend. And I know 20 minutes. Have been a problem for most of the season, but in off season, I imagine Stuart will have them working on it and they'll come back rejuvenated next year. You know, you mentioned a bit of lack of consistency in, in, in the Canberra squad in general with injuries and whatnot, but especially that right edge, mate, especially since BJ Lay Lewis has gone, gone over to the Tigers. What do you reckon is the future for that right edge? Because you've had a lot of ins and outs this year on that side. And, and if you talk about consistency, who do you want to see on that side? Well, obviously there's Curtis Scott, I know he's been injured and he didn't have the greatest of year, but now obviously there's no police investigation going on anymore, he might come back. And we know he can play when he plays. I think he, he, Rapan has shown he can still do a great job on the wing, but I don't think he's a centre. And I think you push him back to right wing and Bailey Simonson comes on to left wing, but or do you, do you dive into the market and try bring in a centre? For me, I think it'll be Scott and Rapana, and I think hopefully... We could build a strong partnership, but I definitely think that's a, a weak area for us at the minute, and it definitely needs looking at. You just signed Caleb Aitkins, mate. I know he's primarily a fullback, but do you think they might try him that way? I won't be surprised. You know, Sticky's not scared to move what's about, is he? He's shown that with Whiten this year, especially. Um, I think it's a great pickup, especially if uh, they can fit him in somehow. He might even get a fox team role. Obviously, you've got Starling knocking about. We don't know what's happened with him and Hodgson neither. But that's a great luxury to have. We haven't really had a fullback this year with CNK went down injured to come in and do a good job. And now you've got a talent like him. I was surprised to see Panthers let him go, really. I know they've, they're not struggling for numbers, but he's, he's, a good, he's a good talent. Obviously, I know you boys rate him as well. So, great pick up for those, hopefully. And if he can go out and win, we'll have a go with him. Yeah, definitely, mate. I mean, in some games I've seen him play, I think I almost prefer him to Dylan Edwards in some cases, so I'm surprised they've let him go. But I guess if he's pushing for that starting spot, I want him more consistency than he's... And, you know, if they're looking to get rid of salary cap stuff, he's probably up there to be to be released. 
you know, we talked we talked about him earlier on in the in the uh, in the broadcast, mate. Jerome Hughes. We've this is the third time we'll bring him up now. But where do you think his stance is in the in terms of the best number sevens in the league? For me, this year, obviously, I know Nathan Cleary has been unreal this season. But I can't think of anyone who's been as consistently good as him at seven. You know, I I wrapped on about Moses at the start of the year. Thought he would have a big year, and he just fell short a bit. But for me, he's, he's definitely up there. You know, he. Mitch Pierce fell short again as well, but you've got to look for Hughes as well. About a year and a half ago, he was just a fullback who they were looking at, and they weren't sure what they were going to do with him. And the the last eighteen months he's developed. He's, he's, I bet he's one of the first names on the team sheet. But for me, I don't know about you two boys, but for me, he's definitely. I'd say, well, for me, I reckon he's second at the minute. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I mean, he came in obviously as cover for Billy Slater for when he retired. It didn't really work out for Brody Croft at seven, so they moved Hughes to seven and t- kind of tried to trial Pappenhausen there, which is obviously where it wonders. But, you know, I, I like Adam Reynolds. I think he's a, he's a world-class player on his day. He loves to control the kicking game. Um, and Mitchell Moses on his day as well is, is pretty special, but he's definitely up there in the top five for me. And what, what I mean, Nathan Clare is probably number one for you, Ed, but you reckon Hughes is up there as well? Yeah, 100%. And, you know, at Melbourne, the the coaching staff that they've got, he's only going to get better, isn't it? Yeah, I will have Cleary in the in the number one spot. Of course, I will. And yeah, the other names that you're throwing about there, like Reynolds, but Hughes is up there without a doubt. Talking about the the rotation, the bench in the past couple of weeks, lads. Joss, I'll come to you first. Obviously, with the six again rule and, and wanting more pace and more power in the game, they were thinking that reducing the unit change even more would allow for more fatigue in the defence and showing more attacking prowess. Do you think it will be smart to reduce the interchange even more and rely more on the fitness and, and the prowess of the forward pack? Um, I'm not too sure on that one. We've seen a lot of, I know the freak injuries, but we've seen a lot of more injuries this season, especially like ACL injuries and season-ending injuries. And I think the more fatigue people are going to get, the more injuries and issues we're going to see. Um, but yeah, if, if, if we cut it down, then it's going to speed the game up. It's going to make it more interesting. You might not see teams dominate as well, which we've seen this year, obviously, but you're going to see it more. But for me, I think I'd, uh, I'd leave it as it is for a while and then maybe, you know, look to make some changes again in the future. But I don't know about you two, boys. What do you reckon, Aid? Yeah, I think if they're going to look at doing something like that, it needs to be eased in. Um, you know, this is a big change, as it is already. We've heard the players speak about the difference it makes to sort of how they play, the speed of the game. So to to change that and the number of interchanges, I think would probably be a lot at once. So maybe in a, a couple of years, if the players adjust to adjust to it how it is, um, get fitter, and again to uh, echoing what Josh is saying, like to protect against those kind of fatigue injuries and stuff like that. Because that's that's the kind of thing that no one wants to see. And as soon as you get a couple of them, there's going to be questions as to the NRL. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, I mean, I'm happy with what it is at the minute. If they're gonna, if they're gonna try and push this more fatigue for, for better attacking games, then I'd leave it another season or two. See how the six again rule switches on, because I think this is a big turning point in rugby league is a six again rule. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree with you too. Maybe at least leave it a season or two before before looking at that. Final first, in, uh, sorry, finally on this topic, mate. We we did pencil in that Cameron Smith next week could potentially be his last ever game in rugby league. Nothing's been announced. He's keeping it very close to his chest. Just for you, Joss, who's your captain in going forward if Cam Smith does pack it in? Yeah, it's a bit of a tough one and one I've been thinking about a fair bit. Obviously, you'd think of someone like Cameron Munster because he's going to be around for a while and he is quality. But then again, do you want to burden him down with that? Whereas he can just play his free game. You've obviously got pack leaders like Fanuke and, and Jesse Bromwich rocking about but Brandon Smith would be a dark horse for me. You know, he's really liked there. He's a young bloke. He's played international consistently for for a while now. And he's always in Melbourne side there, the starting on bench. And for me, I think he brings a lot to He's inspiring. He's a bloke who looks to on field who's going to fly out and put an hit on for you. Or he's a bloke who won't be scared to take that ball in when it just turned a bit feisty. So I think it could be a bit of a smoky for me, could Brandon Smith. Yeah, good shot. Very good shot. I mean, they're not they're not sparse of options, are they? Really, to be fair. So I think Greg Bellamy is not really going to have a headache on that one. If if Cam Smith does decide to retire or not, Joss, thank you very much for that. But Eden, coming to you, mate. Penrith Panthers twenty. The South Sydney Bunny sixteen. 
big smile mm. on your face, just showing your new fake teeth, mate. I mean, <laughs> Penrith first final since 2003, 17 years, arguably the best squad since then. Well, not arguably, it is mm. the best squad since then. 17 wins yeah. in a row. One win away from equaling the all-time in NRL history. It almost seemed like the entire game was a bit of an 